hello guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer there's an update well i can call it an update on the um ifani uh, story so a lot of people are leaving comments and saying that uh, ifani was interviewed by daddy freeze so i check it out and people were just kind of saying one or two things about the interview so i decided to go check it out to know what was said if there's anything more you know and i watched it and if you want to watch it you can go to daddy freeze to watch the full video but i'm going to just play some uh, aspects of it that i want to you know to address and um, you know before i say anything else i'll let you guys listen listen to this you are talking about spirituality tell us a little bit about it um okay so i i did grow up in a christian household um but as of three years ago around the like right before i got pregnant with my daughter um i, I began my spiritual journey um i feel like to me spirituality is a journey to self it's connecting with yourself and trusting that god is always within you meaning that you know we all have intuition we all have a little voice in our head that tells us when something is right when something is wrong and my belief is that be a good person you know my spirituality is focused on being a good person and just knowing that what you put out into the world is going to come back to you and so mm. if you put positivity out it's going to come back if you put negativity out it's going to come back if it doesn't come back today or tomorrow it may come back five years it may not even come back in this lifetime and so that's why i say i'm not religious because i do believe in things that um a lot of people don't believe in as as christians and i say christians because that's the household that i was raised in so um when i began my spiritual journey it was a bit hard for me because all my life you know i was raised that you know jesus christ you know jesus is the way the truth and the light and then growing up and realizing different things it's hard to it's hard to be confident in your beliefs when you know that so many people are not going to understand and I truly believe that this journey of mine is full of people misunderstanding me, but I've been misunderstood my whole life. And so it doesn't really bother me because I do believe spirituality is being true to yourself. And I believe that sometimes religion gets in the way of that because we fight over religion. And, it's, and I do think it's a di divider. I think it's a divider because there's so many different religions, but if we all listen closely, we're saying a lot of the most similar things. Most of all, like the golden rule, <clears throat> treat people how you want to treat yourself. That's just, if everybody would abide by that, first of all, a lot of things would be different. My window in the room, I had some crystals and I had some incense, incense and some Palo Santo. Yeah. And you know, Palo Santo is used to cleanse energy and cleanse, basically remove bad energy from your space, from yourself even, and and there was a candle there too so i i do believe that when people lack knowledge of things sometimes it's scary i'm sorry my daughter is playing hold on <laughs> but um i do believe that because sometimes people don't know things maybe they get scared of it so i feel like when i started my spiritual journey crystals were scary to me until i realized that they're just a tool to use to talk to god to get closer to your higher self crystals come from the earth they come from the earth and they're actually referenced in the bible as well but because they've been so demonized people d don't care to learn about them they don't care to learn about the natural properties of them and i believe that anything is a tool it but but it's depending on how you use it there are bad people in this world yes there are people who don't have good intentions when they use certain things, but that doesn't mean that the tool itself is demonic, you know? And, and so that's, that's something that I believe scared her. And honestly, me and my mother have had several conversations about my spirituality. Um, there was actually a time where she would come to me genuinely and want to know certain things. And I would have that conversation with her. But then I, I, like there, we weren't in contact for a couple of months and um now that we're in contact i think things have changed so it's like now i'm being attacked for my beliefs instead of there just being a mutual understanding like there what there like there once was and and so i don't know i feel like she just was scared about it when i was 18 i went to college 
and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in nursing. And after I graduated, um, I kind of got depressed because for a long time I've known that I was a healer and you know i was pushed to go to school and i'm grateful to go to school to, to have had that experience but now i know that i was never meant to be a registered nurse because i don't resonate with western medicine i just don't so coming out of that depression i met the father of my child and then we were together for almost three years but the relationship became toxic um i don't really don't really want to go into detail but it, it became toxic and we had a, a big disagreement and I was pushed to have to make a decision of staying in that toxic environment or either being homeless with my daughter or returning to my mother's home. Honestly, my mother and I, before this situation, um, we didn't talk for six months. And when I, when I did have my daughter, um, my mom called me that day and she, I lived two hours from her. So she came to to, say, to see my daughter. Mind you, we had no conversation prior to this. There was no apology. There was no reconciliation. She just felt that because now my grand, granddaughter is here, I'm automatically back in your life. And so she was healthy, completely healthy. But me having a nursing background, I knew that a baby is supposed to use have a bowel movement within 24 to 72 hours. So after that, when I noticed that she didn't have her bowel movement, I decided to take her to the hospital. So we went to the hospital and they decided to admit us to the NICU because she was only three days old. Okay, where's your dad? My dad is in Nigeria. I'm not sure if he's, he might be in Asaba. What's your relationship with your dad like? Um, so right now, currently we're on speaking terms. We only just now got back on speaking terms because when I had my daughter, before I had my daughter, I kind of had a lot of animosity towards people who hurt me. So after having her, it kind of made me want to reconcile and give people another chance in my life. My dad was one of them. Growing up, my daddy wasn't there. He wasn't really there much. He would come visit, then he would go back, he'll come visit. And then the visits became less and less and less. And I would always reach out to him, text him, call him, try to have a relationship with him, but it wasn't reciprocated. So at, when I went off to college, I kind of decided I didn't want to chase after him anymore. I stopped wanting to talk to him. I no longer wanted a relationship with him. And I was, I, I feel like I had a lot of anger towards him. So for years, I didn't talk to my father for years. I didn't talk to him because I, I resented him for not being there. I resented him for for leaving us and so I kind of resented him for it. I didn't talk to him for years. When I had my daughter, I just called him. I called him one day after like maybe three or four years of not talking to him and I told him I wanted to tell him something. I introduced him to my daughter. He cried. He was happy and we reconciled our relationship and my, do my dad, the reason I was so hurt is because whenever my dad was around, our relation he, he was the one that understood me he was the one that would talk to me my dad is an angry person he's very do you think the reason why your mom is not with your dad is because of the way your mom is according to you toxic could that be a factor i do believe this and we're working on building our relationship again because i understand that life happens and he's apologized for not being there when i was younger he feels bad about it and he's he's taking accountability and he tries his best to have a relationship with me now and that's all i ever wanted was a relationship with him 70. your dad's 70. Mm -hmm. you're not gonna have him around for much longer i hope you're aware whatever little time you have left mend your fences talk to him yeah we had that. you said something about your dad you said he was the one that used to listen to you tell me a little bit about that um so like my mom she's so she was the one that was there but whenever my dad would come home me and him would have more heartfelt conversations 
my mom, we did, we never really had heartfelt conversations. If you're coming across this and you don't know what we're talking about, um, I'll put a link to the first video so you can get a feel of what the story is. And like I said in that other video, and, and a lot of people agree with me, you know, it's such an important topic to discuss because parents and children can learn a lot from these people's uh, story. Now, after watching uh, the interview with uh, Dad Freeze, a few things that I want to address. One, uh, when she spoke about her, she's a nurse. It's nice to know that she has a profession. But at the same time, she said she doesn't want to practice nursing. She doesn't want to work as a nurse. But yeah, she said because she does not believe in Western... She does not believe in Western medicine. Is that what she said? I can't remember the way she phrased it. Western medicine. Yeah, something like that, right? But it's, it's then contradictory because when her child was unwell, she took her child to a hospital this is something she does not believe in she does not believe in it but she used it when she needed it another thing is that she said her mother you know she said her mother is toxic being with her mother is a toxic toxic environment we have watched the videos and we can see there was the connection is toxic like i mean the relationship is toxic the two of them shouldn't be around each other especially knowing that her mother is 50 60 you know 50 58 year old she said her mother just turned 58. The mother is almost 60 year old woman. A 60 year old woman does not need this at this point in her life. 60 is not a kid. 60 is an elder. Do you know what I When I say elder, she is an elder. She shouldn't be at this point in her at all anymore. And then she was in a relationship for three years. That's the father of the child she has. And that relationship got toxic. So she went home. She broke away from me. She broke away from that relationship and went home to be with her mother. And I'm saying, the boyfriend is toxic, her mother is toxic. What's going on? But another interesting thing is that she has two toxic people, but she went to be with her mother. You get why? You get why? Because if both of them are toxic, but yet you could still, you chose between the two of them to be with your mother. Like I said in my other video, it means that your mother is home to you. At the same time, the mother raised her and her sisters by herself. Her parents were together, they broke up. Uh, from what I understand, it seems it was when they broke up, the father moved back to Nigeria and left this woman to raise three children by herself. This woman has been raising the three children by herself. If her relationship broke up and she ran to her mother, when Ifani's mother's relationship broke up, who did Ifani's mother run to? Nobody. Ifani's mother did not run to her own mother. She stayed there, put her foot down, and tried to carry the weight all by herself, to raise these children by herself. But Ifani came to her mother when her own broke up. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Ifani has a mother to fall back on when the going got tough. Who did Defiance's mother have to run to when her own broke up? She had nobody. Okay, there's another talking about toxicity. Uh, talking about toxicity. When that priest said to her, "Do you think it is because of your mother's toxicity or something like that? That is why. Uh, uh, that is what uh, affected her marriage." If I, I hope I'm quoting that. I already played. I hope, hopefully, I'm quoting it correctly. So, and the girl was like agreeing with that. It's very easy to have that assumption that, oh, the mother's must, that must have been what ended the marriage. Nobody knows. Because if you want to apply that logic, that is toxicity that ended if, uh, if his mother's marriage, then you can also apply the logic and say, it's toxicity in Ifani that ended her relationship with her husband. I mean, with her boyfriend that warranted her coming home to her mother with a, a few month old baby. You understand? So why put it on the mother but not on Ifani? Because Ifani's relationship is over too. You know? So you see, you can't quickly jump to those kind of conclusions. Another aspect again is that Ifani said that the father, when he left, he was coming once in a while and then he stopped coming. He was not uh, making the effort to be in her life. He wasn't. But at the end, she now said, it's the father that understands her better. She, she now started painting this beautiful pictures of this father that left, that abandoned her. 
She said she was looking for connection. She was basically almost begging for it. Father was not giving, giving it to her. That father that abandoned her and her sisters all of a sudden has become the angel. But the mother that stuck with it through thick and thin is now the, the one that is a bad person. It happens though that the parent that stayed to raise the children because that parent is the one that says go and pack your bag get up get ready you're going to be late to school we will fix your hair did you clean your room then because the, she the, the that present parent is one doing the ibamba english giving out like always you know don't do this the disciplining the everything that parent becomes the bad person but that absent one that is not present to, uh, have you ironed your uniform? Well, go iron your uniform, Moses. So, have you that, that parent that is absent that has never had that opportunity to be in your life and do all the things that are involved in raising a child? The giving out to a child, which is normal, disciplining of the child, and all those things that are not sweet end up being the bad one. She was saying something about, you know, with the father when the father speaks and the father tried to tell us about, you know, all of that. The mother that has been around. You know, there's something they say that, um, what's that? I forgot how they say something like distance. Distance makes the heart. How do they speak? And something about, I put it on the screen. When you don't see somebody in a long time, they become just like in families. Families, those people that have died are the angels in the family. But the people that are alive are fighting each other. <laughs> the people that are alive are fighting each other, quarreling all the time, pointing finger. But the ones that are, that are dead, that can no longer be seen, are the ones that are the angels. I remember when, oh, I remember when. But the ones that are alive, no matter how good they are, their goodness will not see them. It happens here as well. In cases where one parent is raising children and gets to be with them all the time, see, finish, go, enter. Another area I want to speak about, she says she's doing something. And I'm glad that if I said that, her mother is scared. So she is doing some kind of, she said one kind of spirituality, whatever she called her own spirituality, and she has some crystals or some stones or whatever. So the mother sees it as juju. No be African parents. Do you know that where I come, where I come from, the part of Nigeria, I'm from the east. The part of Nigeria where I come from, if a Muslim person should come and put a mat to pray, people will run. <laughs> people will run. There are no must in my area. I didn't see, I didn't see. People dress, you know the Muslim dress until I came to Lagos. The first time I saw it, I got down at all Jota. I came out from Benin to Kini. I saw somebody dressed in black. Women dressed in black and you know the Muslim dressing. I was shaking. I was crying. Because in my place, only masquerades that we can't see face. I was scared. But everybody was walking as if nothing. But that was my first time seeing somebody. With... So this is something about what somebody is used to. Her mother, and thank God if I said it herself, her mother is scared because of those things. She thinks it's juju. Because at least you know it's because she's scared. It's not because she's toxic. It's not because she hates you. It's not because she's scared. She's a Christian and she feels that her child is lost. That her child is worshipping man-made God. She doesn't understand it. That is why. So, okay. Another thing I want to say that I even came to my mind is this. If I had problems in her life, and she had her mother to run back to. If the mother was not her mother, and she it was a friend, she ran to her friend to say, my relationship ended, I need somewhere to stay. And she stayed with a friend, and the friend tells her, you see that crystal thing you're doing? I don't like it. You can't do it in my house. I bet you, if I you will handle it differently. But because she's in her mother's house, there is that sense of, sense of entitlement we have when it comes to our parents. This is my parent. So my mother's house is my house. I can do whatever I like in my mother's house. But a 25-year-old woman is a grown woman. Though. So what I'm trying to make people understand is that if that was a friend's house or somebody that just helped us, okay, stay here in my house, take this room until you sort yourself out. If that person should say, I don't like this in my house, I believe she won't do it. But when it comes to our parents, there's that thing about, is my parent. And we forget that as an adult living in your parents' house, it is your parents' house. They should have the right to say, okay, I don't like this one in my house. They should have the right to say it. And if they say it, consider it in your head. Like, is, it because it's, is it because it's my mother? What if it was just a friend or some whatever, somebody out there that gave me somewhere to stay and I'm squatting in that person's house? 
Will I have the guts to tell the person, I don't care if you like when I do this in your house or not? You won't do that. But why do it to your mother? Daddy, why do it to a mother when you actually, like she said, the mother was afraid. Afraid. Okay. Another area I want to speak about is that, you know, when the mother was saying something about her daughter needs help or something, there was way the mother was phrasing it, you know, and she was telling her that um, it's not you, it's not, I have nothing against you, it is the the demon or whatever she the mother believes that there's something wrong with her child let me tell you for your grown child to go to college and qualify as a nurse in a country like america where nurses are well paid and choose not to practice that nursing i won't be surprised if an african mother says this thing will be ordinary hand in Igbo language we say obaka i won't be surprised so when she says my daughter needs help, my daughter needs help, she may be thinking that her enemy is done. You know, in Nigeria, and I will say, ah, my enemy is done. As in, this, you know, your dying hands, there must be forces, you know, there must be forces behind it. So people are praying to be able to be nurses so they can make good money and have a good life. And somebody went to nursing school and finished and chose not to practice. Your mother, it was, it's not surprising that the woman thinks that there is something wrong with her child. It won't be surprising. You understand? Because it doesn't make sense to her that you have the opportunity, like that the that her child has the opportunity to be successful, you know, financially successful and all of that. And she just chose not to practice the nursing she went to study. It won't be. What I'm saying is this. This is the problem I tell people. Make sure you are listening and quote me correctly. I say it won't be surprising if the mother believes that it is not ordinary hand. Right? The Ifani apparently on uh, Ifani was apparently asking people to for donations, asking people for money to help her. Right? Financially. How why would the mother not think that there is something not right? The mother would think like that. Because she has the avenue to be financially successful, financially independent. You get my point. Even now, on top of that, and I'm on top of that, let's be honest with ourselves. Ifani's mother raised three children by herself three if i is with one child and she's asking strangers online for help you see you understand what i'm trying to say and you know when if i was trying to leave and the mother was trying to hold on to the grand her grandchild i won't be surprised if it is because she, she, maybe she i don't know but i'm just saying like this one i don't know <clears throat> it could be that she feels like i'd rather this grandchild is raised around me so that i can help guide this child she may not even trust let me tell you it is not her it is not her child it is if i child i'm just saying that as a grandmother it's possible that this was what was going on in her head it's like i don't want this child to turn out like if i in her head if she has felt if she feels like if i has not turned out right upon all the effort she put towards if i she may be like she may be worried that if i will not raise the child well she may be you understand? So at that end, when she was got emotional, she was like, you know, she didn't want to let you find you go. She became clingy because, you know, people get emotional attachment. And at the same time, this is an almost 60 year old woman. 60 year old woman. You understand? Let's not forget that. Because when we talk about, you know, so people say, don't blame me, Fanny. It is just the way she was raised. You know, it is this, that, that. At the same time, people forget that. Ifani's mother was raised the same way. So if we're going to excuse Ifani, why can't we excuse the mother to her saying that so it's because of the way she was raised? But I feel like Ifani is at a better position. Ifani's mother is old and she's old. There's no upward. It's when I say upward, it's like she's an old woman now. All she's gonna do is get older. Older, you know what that means. So the knowledge she has about child raising and the African style. It would be almost impossible at the age of almost 60 for, for her to change. But if I is in the position, in the position to bridge that gap, to say, okay, this is how they reason, you know, but that is wrong. And definitely implement the changes that are required for her child. But at the same time, handle a mother accordingly, knowing that a mother does not know better than that. It's not surprising when her mother was trying to like, not let her go or whatever. Because now she knows that Ifani has no home, Ifani is not working, and Ifani has a little child with her. No mother wants her grandchild 
to going through uh, homelessness and be squatting here and there. No mother wants that. So me personally, I said it. I said, let her go. Let Ifan you go. Let Ifan you go figure out life for herself as well. Let her raise her own children. The mother does, does not care. We don't even care when she says she's leaving. In short, when the mother was coming, when she said she's homeless, uh, she needed a home to stay, a wicked mother will not even offer it her place. Will, will not, real wicked mothers will not let the person come in at all, at all. And if you see in a lot of cases, we, especially in Western, Western society, some of these young people, even if not, I don't even know, she's a young woman, let me put it like that, but she's 25. Because I, I even sat down and I think about when I was 25, I left home at 17. I never went back. 17. At 25, I already had two children. I was already a woman running a home. You get my point. You know, it's very easy because if you watch that video in the the, the original video, you hear if I you talk so much about her rights, her rights, and all of that. You know, there are rights in this life and there are responsibilities. If I is at a point where she should hold down a job, have a home of her own. Have all her, it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up, but have your life plans lining, planning to, as in lining up. They never line up, finish, but at least they are coming in place. When I watched that video at first, if if, if, if you watch that video without being, to, without being told her age, it's easy to have to think that if I was a teenager, to be honest with you guys, it's very easy to have thought she was a teenager, but she's 25. Like I'm saying, we have rights, but what about our responsibilities? When I listened to this, right, I, I, it just, to be honest, it felt, it was very sad, really sad that the father could just walk away and never look back. She was reaching out to her father and he, he never looked back. And all of a sudden, you know, he's back in her life, you know, at his own convenience. And he's this, uh, the best father in the world. Well, not the, you know, he's this amazing man that he's, the, he's better than the mother better than the mother that stayed that stayed and uh, this life eh? is this life no balance at all the mother that stayed and never abandoned them so imagine if as the father abandoned them imagine if the mother had abandoned them too maybe by now if i will be crying for her mother's love maybe because another thing i noticed is you see I, even in that video i said it if I you complained that when I was pregnant, my mother did not come to see me or something, something like that. And then it seemed if I also said that when I had my baby, she came uninvited. If she doesn't come, she's wrong. She comes, which African, there's no part of African culture that a mother needs to be invited when her grandchild is born. You know they happen. You know they happen. At all. It doesn't happen. You know what I mean? So... She came uninvited. And let me tell you guys, if it's possible that the mother has said, oh, you had the baby, congratulations, should I come? It's possible if I will say, can you imagine she was asking me if she should come? Should the mother not know that she should come? This is what I'm trying to say. There are a lot of ways where if I says this and she says the opposite. And then I'm not surprised that when he said, if I complained that her mother was calling her too much. She said her mother was calling her, she can call her up to 10 times a day. She is so controlling and she called that being controlling. If she calls me 10 times and I don't answer, she will call a friend to ask them where I am. That was the mother that was worried. Where was the father when the mother was trying to find out where her child was? At that point, wherever the father is, I don't even know if he married, remarried or whatever. The father did not know whether she answered calls or not. The mother that knows that she's not answering calls and is worried enough to call because that one got me over because <laughs> I'm that kind of mother that I call a lot. If I call my child as long as I panic, I start calling, calling, calling. I do it. So I answer and say, so does that mean I'm toxic? <laughs> Does that mean I'm toxic? I am the type that I will tell my where are you going? Which friend are you going with? Okay, I want the phone number of that friend. In case I call, in case I call, you don't answer. I want to be able to call the friend. I do it. Does it mean I'm a toxic parent? But me, I know that's because I worry for my children. So the same, if I you complain that my mother calls too much. She now said, that my mother stayed in six months. She did not call me for six months. And her mother said, the phone works both ways. And I thought to myself, if if I complain that the mother calls too much, I'm not surprised if the mother said, okay, maybe the solution is, let me not call, leave her to do the calling. 
so that it won't be that I'm calling her too much. And then if I did not call her for six months, the mother was still waiting for the six months. You see? So she called, she's calling too much. She does not call at all. She, she did not call. Such a mother can't get confused and say, what does this girl really want? There was a place the mother said, sometimes I don't even want to ask you what is wrong. Because I feel like once I ask, the whole, she said it will bring out the bitterness or something like that. It's like once she asks, it will bring out argument and everything. So sometimes the mother doesn't even know. To ask, how are you doing? Or not to ask. The mother does not know. The woman sounded confused. She sounded to me, she didn't sound toxic. She sounded helpless and confused as in she no longer knows how to do it right. And let me tell you guys, you see why? Unfortunately, the way it is, it's gonna be harder for um for if I to sway her mother any other way because her mother will sit down and say, as a woman, I'm able to hold down a job. I'm able to have a roof over my head. I'm able to be here for my children, in spite of the fact that her father walked off and never came back. And uh, the mother said something in that video. She said the hell that of the, uh, if that the if I instead that put her through. She said the hell that she put her that he put her through. The same if I said that the father left and never looked back. He was absent in their life and everything. It's possible that this the if I his mother has been to hell. It's, you see what I'm using? It's possible. And in spite of that, she still tried to juggle a job, keep a roof over their heads, and make sure her children have good education. Make sure she stayed in spite of everything. And there was something she if I he said that the mother would be like, she the mother would say, You left me to raise children by myself. She didn't say, You left me. Mm -mm. See, she left me. Mm -mm. She wasn't speaking for herself. So it's not even like, okay, she's angry about the relationship ending. She is angry that the man left her to raise the children alone. So relationships can end, but people need to take responsibility for their actions. Actions bringing children to the world. No man should have a free ride, but apparently for what we're seeing, he finds his father has had a great free ride in the sense that he chose to be absent all these years. And then now in his old age, I think if I say he's 70, 70, in his old age, he gets to answer a good father. From what he found, he said, he's a good man. You see what I'm saying? Even though he abandoned this responsibility all these years, the woman that stayed is the bad parent. But the parent that walked away is not the good one. That he found, he says, he understands me. He is the one that this, is the one that that. But he's the one that she said, you know, she was always the one calling, he was not calling, he was not whatever. But the mother that stayed is the problem. You know when she was saying that it was only her and her father that would have heartfelt conversation, whatever the way she was phrasing it. Why would I not go get heartfelt conversation or whatever, whatever conversation you say, hey, whatever. The woman is busy hustling to make money to raise these children, hustling to be the provider, hustling to be all of these things. The man goes on holiday, basically has holiday from parenting and then comes in fresh, completely refreshed. Why will he not be free to be doing this conversation? Because he's free. It's only a part-time thing he's doing. Occasionally he did it. When she spoke about her father, she was all smiles and all happy. And this is the man that walked away. <laughs> this is the man that walked away that was absent. Her face lit up. But that parent that was there, when she speaks about her, is different. And she said the way the father expresses his love is different. How did he express it? The man. Like the man that expressed his love by walking away and not looking back. Leaving you guys by yourselves all this time. He is the one that is, the way he expresses his love is different and he is better. And she said her father would be like, oh, sit down, let me tell you this. Let me talk about that. Because he has the time. The mother that is hustling, come back, cook, clean, do this one, do that one, go to work again. But the small time she has to sit down and sleep is to wake up in the morning and continue again to hustle. And the part-time father, Abi, occasional father, part-time is even occasional father, comes and he has the time to sit down. It's the same thing like in the most household where the father is the breadwinner and the mother stays at home. You hear some children say, oh, our mother was the one that was available, she used to listen, our father was never available, he was always traveling, always busy. But the single mother is juggling all of them, the role of the father, the role of the mother, juggling it. I don't know, like I said, there are so many parts of this story, there are so many parts we can 
talk about and discuss. When people leave, left comments to say she went to the freeze, I just thought, okay, let's come around it up and just update according to what is there. I feel like it's a good thing that if Ayin has gone, her mother can be on her own. Let them, my advice for if Ayin's mother is let her be. You day on your own. You, if you guys' relationship will improve in the future, they can be visits or whatever. But living together, I will not advise it. Personally, I will not advise it because they will, they will always continue to clash. Because they are not, the way they see life is completely opposite. And to continue to be together and frustrate each other. My biggest worry self is the old woman that is almost 60. She does not need this at all. I, let me tell you guys, I believe that in the next 10 years, my belief that in the next 10 years, that uh, if I, I may be wrong, I may be wrong, but I believe in the next 10 years that if I may see life differently from the way she sees it right now. This is how I see it about the updates or whatever. I believe that there are so many things that like I said that if I contradict herself because she's saying she doesn't believe in Western medicine. And then the next thing, her child, she took her child to the hospital. That is Western medicine, right? She's saying uh, the boyfriend is toxic, the mother is toxic. You know, sometimes, in not in all cases, but sometimes when everybody around you is toxic, you sit down and say, as she said, she, in that video, she said she called her friends. I don't know, none of them is answering. And I'm wondering, okay, why did her friends, two friends, nobody answered? Uh, sometimes you have to sit back and actually evaluate. I'm not saying that she is, I'm not saying, I don't know, but I'm saying sometimes you have to sit back and actually say, if this person is toxic, that person is toxic, that friend is failing me, that friend. Sometimes you reflect and see, are there way, areas in your life you need to change? Sometimes we may even be the problem, right? Uh, then one minute she's saying the father abandoned them, never looked back, I was almost begging for his love, and the next minute she's saying he's the one that understands me. The father that understands you will not leave you, and uh, he's not trying to contact you. He will not even try to be in your life. You're the one for You understand? So is he, does he understand? You understand? So anyways, that's the update. I'm going to end it here. Whatever your opinions are, you can, you're free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.